So last time we were here, we were able to make uh, pop-ups, uh, to make a pop-up after we clicked the little speech bubble of a comic. Uh, we're going to change the code a little bit. Open up your index.js file, and let's go find where we had the code. Uh, it'd be best if you search, if you do control F, and search for dollar dot mobile. On mine it happens to be on line 428. But remember the usefulness of search. When you've got hundreds of lines of code, if you kind of know where you need to go, if you kind of remember the code you need to work on, control F or command F on the Mac to find can really help you so you can jump quickly to that line. I believe there's also a way to jump directly to line number, but obviously I don't have the line numbers memorized. Uh, unless you do, that'd be very impressive. But I have a dollar dot mobile. I kind of remember that. Dollar dot mobile is what we used last time. So find your line 428 or so. When we were writing this, I remembered. Oh, this is a, this is the deprecated version of the code, meaning it works, but it's the older version. Uh, we want to use the newer version. We've used the newer version already when we've had on line 61, for example mobile page container blah 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 that's the newer generation of the code we want to use so for this dollar dot mobile comment that line out maybe just for a reference and instead we're going to use the the newer version of the code which is a little bit longer but it's the more newer correct version so I commented out the old version the dollar selector parentheses uh, quotes colon no pound sign there this is a, a pseudo selector it's a special case one of the few ones like this colon mobile dash page container all lowercase that's our object dot page container the method here it is here so we've got change we previously had this is basically jQuery mobile dot change, uh, change page. That was the old one. The new one is the more generic page container change. Where are we changing to? Like we had above here, we're changing to pop view comics info pound pop comics. We're changing to pop view comics info, comma. Then it's the exact same options. Uh, curly braces, roll, colon, dialog cuts off. I'll zoom out in a moment, but it's exactly the same. The big difference, of course, is um, the object and its particular method. So this is the newer, more recommended way to do it, and it should do exactly the same as before. Uh, I'll just write here for the notes, old version, deprecated. Sometimes people see depreciated. Uh, that's something else that has to do with like uh, finance or something. It hasn't been depreciated, so it's deprecated. It just means it's old. It works, but eventually they'll cut it out of the specification, so we might as well use the newer version. So newer version of the page transition jQuery mobile code. So it doesn't fit, but at the very end we have the ending of the parentheses, which is the ending of the page container method with one argument. Uh, comma the second one comma the third one no extra comma and the third one is options in object notation curly braces which property which value which key which value role dialog it's a little bit more wordy than the old one but it's more correct you can test that if you want now what we're going to cover today is 
this whole concept of uh, deleting and editing the individual comics. We have a way to delete the whole database. We don't want that. We want individual comics. It'll be a lot easier to deal with deleting a comic than we'll do editing a comic. So to edit a comic, we have a button on screen that appears when we've clicked a particular comic. That comic in question, I would think logically, is the one I want to edit or delete. There's obviously many ways to do it, but if we look at, in our particular example, let me sign in here, view a comic, uh, let me save a comic. Save that. View comics. So I've got at least one comic. Click on the little speech bubble. And here I see the info that I've seen before. And this is the comic in question that I can delete or edit. Let's say I was, uh, I'm going to add another one. I misspelled it. So I've got a couple of comics. I want to fix this one, or maybe delete it. We'll do delete first, then edit. Maybe I don't actually have this one in the collection anymore. I want to remove it. So the idea will be we'll click the speech bubble. And from here, this is the comic number two. This is the one I want to delete. So we've got a button, which will be our trigger. We'll, have, we'll need an event listener to listen or to wait for that to be clicked, and then to run a function to delete the right comic in question. We've got in the HTML file, just to refresh my memory, in the HTML file we've got that delete button, which we probably just called btn delete, very easy, delete comic. So we're going to have uh, an event listener uh, to listen for BT and delete comic being pressed. Let's set that up in the index.js. Let's go to where we've got all, our, all of our event listeners near the end of the code. Before end of on device ready, mine is line 463. Oh, we need the object so that we can do the on click um, and then run the function. So actually, let's back up. We need the object for L, btn, delete comic. We don't have that yet. Let's back up where we've created all of our variables for our objects. Back up near the top, where our, par where, where our pouch stuff starts. So up high here, line. Uh, 193. Variable dollar L BTN delete comic is equal to dollar selector quotes pound BTN delete comic. semicolon. So that creates an object uh, based on that HTML element. So now we can reference that button in the HTML code via this JavaScript object, which we created via jQuery. Do you, uh, do you ever just chain them together, or do you find it's best practice to separate them? Chain them in when we create the, var the VARs? Yeah, You know, I don't really do that that often, but that's that's a way to do it. Sure, chaining it all together when it's viable, that could be helpful too, to define it at that point and then add the event listener. I was just curious if you did that explicitly, separate the two, then, and because it's best practice to do it. 
I would have to look at an example just to kind of see if we're on the same page talking about it the same way. But um, yeah. so we've got the uh, we've got the object. Uh, then we'll go back down to where we've got all of our events listeners, and then there we'll set it up that on click of this button will run our function. So let's go back down to the bottom. So we're about to set ourselves up in 464. Now we've got $L btn delete comic on method. On the event of a click, We'll run a function to delete the comic. We'll just call that fn delete comic. So we've got our object, we've got our events listener. Uh, now we'll make our function. So we're going to make a function, delete comic. And that'll be in charge of deleting this particular comic that we're currently viewing. So I'm going to save that. Let's back up to where we've made our last um, function. Function fn delete comic. This is the end of our function delete comic. As we've been doing, we can give ourselves a little console output here to say start of or starting to delete comic. We can actually do something useful here. Starting to delete comic space plus temp comic to delete. We have temp comic to delete. We have this global scope variable, we have this variable that is that was the very last comic we clicked on. When we clicked on that speech bubble that did that whole thing from Tuesday where it was checking which particular comic are we dealing with. Remember we had this dot parent. And then ultimately, we, we checked the data-id of that particular row. Data-id of that row is the unique ID in the database. And we had set right up here. We had set uh, temp comic exists in this function, so we would not be able to use it in this function because it was local scope. So we set the global scope version of it to the one we're currently dealing with. Right here, we're just checking, OK, which comic are we about to delete? We can save it and run it at this point to check. If we do press the delete button in the console, it'll say started to delete comic. And it'll give us the ID of the particular comic in question, which is the comic that right now I clicked on its speech bubble. So you can uh, run that for a moment. Let me see if mine works. I expect to click the delete button in the console. It, I expect it to say starting to delete comic and the particular ID of the comic in question. View comic, Spider-Man, click on that. Clear my console just to see it fresh. Delete. Starting to delete comic, SPI21963. delete is a variable currently storing the ID of the comic in question, the one we clicked on the speech bubble for. We're going to use that as our way to delete a comic. According to the PouchDB specification, 
db dot remove is the way that we delete one comic db dot remove that's the method to remove one comic what was that one method to get rid of everything the whole database destroy db dot destroy so it's two different methods one method destroys the whole database and db dot remove or the method remove removes one item so what we're going to do is we need to specify which item to remove basically temp comic delete just like db dot destroy that was a bit too you know nuclear option as soon as you do db dot destroy it's all gone we had a little bit of a confirmation didn't we when we deleted the whole database we should have some confirmation as well for deleting an individual comic uh, we don't really need to do are you sure are you sure are you sure I think one time of are you sure you want to delete this yeah delete it you can have multiple confirmations if you want so we're gonna have a confirmation to say are you sure you want to dot remove number one but before that best practice for pouch db is to confirm that that comic exists before trying to delete it so we're going to use db.get first we're going to try to get the comic in question if it exists in the database okay then proceed to delete it if it doesn't exist then tell the user something's wrong so before trying to db.remove, we're going to first do db.get to delete one comic. Let's first check if it exists in the db in pouch. So dot get is the method that tries to get from the database uh, a comic or an item in question, a record, a document in question. The one in question is temp comic to delete. The one that's the one that's in question right now. So we're going to try to get the ID of the comic in question. As usual, comma, function, <coughs> fail success, failure success, failure comma success. As usual, we will break that into multiple lines and have our if-else statement. So I'm going to break that into multiple lines and note and dot get. And then we've got an if-else over and over. We've seen this idiom, this syntax, this way of doing it. We have some uh, method of pouch. It's either failure or success. And we check if else. If it's a failure, do something. If Or else it's not a failure, do something else. So first we need to get does this comic exist in the database? If we get else, if we get if, true failure and here's where we're gonna start troubleshooting error comic 
does not exist. And it'd be good to uh, output that failure object so that we can try to track down what's going on. So if, if it's true that there is a failure, console output to troubleshoot it. Inside of the else block, that is our success result. So here is where we're, we're going to uh, ultimately uh, remove the comic. But first we'll ask, are you sure you want to remove this comic? So we'll use a switch. <coughs> Switch to confirm deletion. And inside of switch, this is where we where we ask the confirmation, the confirmation method. This is where we give that pop-up asking confirm deletion of the comic. So we have the confirm method of JavaScript to ask <coughs> or to say about to delete this comic. New line. Are you sure? So since we've done this before, you should hopefully be able to tell what we're about to do. We're going to have a case of true, a case of false, and a default case. We've done that a few times before. Uh, hopefully you remember the syntax for that. So we'll, we'll write case for true with its own little area break, case for false, plus break, and then default, plus break. So the skeleton for that is case true something happens here, break. We can have a case of false, something happens here, break. And we have a default case, in case there's a third, in case there's a third possibility. Something happens there, break. These breaks are very important because it could happen that, yeah, the person canceled false and it jumps here, but since there's no break, it would continue and still do the next case, or worse, if it's untrue and you forget your break, we clicked OK, and it was true, but there was no break, so it still is going to execute false, and maybe even default. So just confirm that you've got the breaks in between these cases. We can go backwards again here. Uh, we can put a little output for the default, uh, try to troubleshoot it. False console is just user canceled. And then under true is where we will eventually have the db.remove to remove the comic. So console. Yeah, in this case, because it's just true or false, it's a bit verbose. I have seen some that say recommended to have a break in all of them just in case. But either or, because it is the final case, that, that makes sense. But I like to err on the side of caution, putting in a break. 
console log will say um, third uh, error to fix. If it's under false, we can then say um, user canceled. We don't really need to tell the user anything themselves, but for us, for ourselves, we can tell ourselves as we troubleshoot this, as we beta test it, we can give ourselves the feedback that, that it canceled. And the big idea that happens inside of true is db.remove. We have our layers of confirmation. We have our attempt to foolproof it. Remember what I said? You can't foolproof anything because there's so many ingenious fools. I borrowed that from some famous person. And um, we are trying to do, you know, help the user be careful what you're about to do so we've got to confirm true or false because ultimately db.remove if you set it up the right way it just does it it just removes the the comic and that's it and unless you built in a way to undo it and all of that it's it's gone so ultimately db.remove Um, the documentation states further to confirm that you're deleting the right thing. Yes, the ID can be used, uh, which is a little bit more of a uh, be careful way. Uh, better practice that the documentation says is to pass in the success object. Well, this success is coming from get failure success. That's an object that represents that this comic exists. It has this particular ID. It has these particular properties. Revisions. We haven't talked about revisions yet because that's when we're going to uh, do updates for the comic. So here we're saying let's remove this object in, in totality. That particular comic which it will have the usual function curly braces failure success Say the first part again. Do you know if the remove function is looking to identify the ID of the record in the database, or is it using every single element to try to get rid of it? It can, rem it can the method can be used, can use the ID itself, but it seems that it's better practice according to the, doc the documentation to use the whole object just to be safe. Because I mean, our temp uh, record may not have, as we add more fields to it, may not have the additional fields in it. Oh, well, that's why we're doing success, because that has the whole object, not just the ID. So if this has a failure and a success, we need to do one more layer of this if else. If it was a failure in actually deleting, or else there was a success. And if there was a successful deletion, well, we need to do a few things, such as redraw the table. Remember that? When we add a new item to the database, we had to call our function that redrew the table to display a new item in the table. This is the opposite. We've removed data from the database. If we got up to this point, it's gone. It is removed. But visually, for the user, we have to redraw our table. Our table is, is, not, is not quite paying attention to what's in the database unless we explicitly call it. 
So ultimately, here under success, we have to redraw the table. So I'm going to break that apart. And uh, dot remove. And then we start our if failure success or failure else. of if else to actually delete the data. We can say in the if part uh, again, console log error, or what's, what's that failure telling us? And then under, under else, what's the success? So console log error in deletion. We can say what that failure object is. Conversely, console log success or uh, success in deletion. And then state what that success object is. the table. Well, our function show comics prep is in charge of that, is in charge of checking what's in the database and ultimately drawing the table on screen. So that means we need to, we need to recheck what's in the database, use that new info to redraw the table. So whenever we make this sort of change, add to the database or remove from the database, we need to redraw the table visible to the user. That's it there. Function show comics prep. And we can note after removing data, We draw the table. If we don't do that, uh, this happens a lot to people. Um, if we don't do that, you're pressing delete and confirming and deleting and deleting, but the table still shows the same comic over and over. And I thought I deleted it. And even if you then check the developer's tools and see the database, and your database is totally empty, but on the table I still see everything. Well, you never redrew your table. Then when they restart the app, everything's gone, and they're like, what happened? This is what happened. You never redrew your ta you never redrew your table when you removed data. Now I'm going to add this next line here, but I've got to double check if it is the correct code. This is supposed to close. This is some code here of jQuery Mobile that is supposed to close the window. So if you pressed delete on the button, we've deleted the comic. So that little info screen should disappear because we've just deleted that comic. And it should be right here. We reference the particular this particular um, section, pop view or pop show comics info. Just double check that. 
that's the name of our ID here, right? Yeah, pop view comics info. That's the name of the section in question. That screen dot dialog close. Um, didn't plan it, but it's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'd have to create uh, we'd have to create a a pop up ID in the HTML and then call it here and all of that. Extra credit. Yes. So um, this is supposed to close the current screen. The current screen is pop view comics. It's a dialog box. We have close. We have the close um, value in this dialog. We can test it at this point. Uh, before we test it, perhaps check your remember to check your uh, error screen, your error list. Nothing, nothing looks bad in my error list. That's good. Then I'm going to run it in my browser to test it, and let's give that a shot. I've got one comic which I might not need anymore. So you click the dialog button, the dialog box button. You get your info screen. And uh, we press delete. You can beta test it by pressing the cancel. Check your output, see if it's behaving as it's expected. And then we'll fully delete it. Testing it, user canceled, started to delete the comic. This is a comic in question. Success in deletion. You can see an alternative output in the Chrome console. Deleted. It refreshes the, it should refresh the, the, uh, the table because I just de we, we deleted an item spider-man 1 I could do the same thing click there delete confirm ok dialog gets closed nothing in the table so let's pause there if this worked we've been able to delete one item from the database if not, we'll pause for a bit to make sure it does.